Number 100. For each of the following pairs of ions, write the symbol for the formula of the compound they will form. And then I have A through E, so I'm just going to write over here A, B, C, and then D and E we'll put down here. All right, now as I scan through A through E, what I notice is that for each pairing that I'm going to form a compound, I see that you always have a positive and you have a negative charge, right? And that's for every one. Here's the positive, here's the negative, positive, negative, et cetera, et cetera. Whenever you have a positive and negative difference, right, and you're taking two ions that have different charges, this is always going to be ionic compounds. So that's what we're dealing with here. All right? So always know that ionic compounds will always be formed with one ion always being the positive. They lost electrons and the other ion is the negative. There will never ever be two positives coming together and there will never ever be two negatives coming together. All right, now majority of the time, ionic compounds are usually metal plus a non-metal, right? But there is an exception. You could also have two polyatomic ions coming together and that would be also a ionic compound as seen in B. NH4 is a polyatomic, and PO4 is a polyatomic as well. Both of those are polyatomic ions. And how do I know this? Because over the years, I have memorized my common polyatomic ions, and I highly recommend that you do too. You should start now, because in chapter four, it's coming at you. We have to memorize these ions, whether you like it or not. So might as well get used to seeing them now and... Later down the road, they'll be easy peasy, all right? So um, that's all I want to say about that. So let's now just form the compounds. Now, with ionic compounds, the positive and the negative, all you're going to do is you're going to do a crisscross method. And what the crisscross method is, I think that this is the easiest method. What it is is you take the charges and you crisscross them down to the other ion to tell you how many of each you have. So let's get started. For A, we have K plus. Now they didn't tell me plus what, so we always assume that that's a one. And then we have oxygen with a two minus. So the crisscross method rule states that you take the charges and that will go down to the other atom to tell you how many you have. So this one crisscross down to tell you that there's one oxygen. You see that this one drag down here. And then you have the minus two. So the two tells you that you should have two potassiums. Now, when you do the cross crisscross rule, the positives and the negatives go away. So don't even look at the positive. Don't even look at the negative. You're just looking at the actual number, whether it's a one, two, three, or four, because that's what's coming down here. You would never say that this is like a negative two. And that's it. So the compound, when potassium comes together with oxygen, it would be K2. You need two potassiums for every one oxygen. Now, you can put the one here, but standard, we don't usually put ones, so that would go bye-bye. And that's the answer to A. Box that answer off. This compound would be K2O. Check that off. B, we have the two polyatomics. We have NH4 plus, so that's a plus one, that's ammonium. And as you noticed, ammonium is always going to be NH4 plus. So that's what I'm talking about with memorizing them and being able to spot them out. It will help you a lot, you know, for later chapters. This is coming in with PO4 three minus. PO4 three minus is phosphate, that's over here. And if you've noticed, phosphate will always be PO4 three minus, never a minus two, never a minus one. These are all standard. So we do the crisscross rule, right? This positive one crisscrosses down to tell me that I only need one whole phosphate. So one whole PO4. This negative three and the, just the three crisscrosses down to tell me that I need three whole ammoniums, NH4. So now when I write this, and if I have multiple of a polyatomic ion, so in this case I have three of the NH4s, what you're going to do is you always put that in parentheses. So you say, okay, I have the NH4, and now I'm going to say I have three of this whole thing. So you only have to use parentheses when you have 
um, more than one polyatomic. You never have to use parentheses for just regular atoms, only for polyatomics. So only for this group. And now this part is saying that you only have one of them. So in this case, you don't need a polyatomic. So it would just be PO4. And that's it. Box your answer off. That's the answer for B. And let me write this up here. So this is K2O. K2O. This one is NH4-3PO4. And that's that one. Next, we got aluminum with the 3 plus, and we have oxygen with the 2 minus. So do the crisscross rule. You guys probably get it by now. The 3 will crisscross down, telling me that I have three oxygens that are going to be in the compound. And the two, or the negative two, crisscrosses down to tell me that I have two aluminums. These are not polyatomic ions, so you don't need parentheses, so it would just be Al2O3. That's it for this one. Box that answer off. Al2O3. Done. Next, for D, we have Na. They just say it's a plus, so it's a plus one. And then they have CO3 two minus. CO3 two minus is another polyatomic, that's carbonate. And if we notice over here, carbonate is always going to be CO3 two minus. You see the drift, guys? Memorize those so that we could spot them out. Okay, so now we're gonna do the crisscross. Plus one, the one comes down to tell me that I have one whole carbonate. And then the two from the negative two crisscrosses down telling me that I have two sodiums. So when this compound becomes a compound, right, it will be Na2 and then just CO3. Now, you could technically put this in parentheses and say one, but it's only one of them, so we don't need those parentheses. So this would be the answer. Box that off. So this would be Na2CO3. And then last but not least, we have Ba, barium, with a 2 plus charge coming in with Again, a phosphate, PO4, 3 minus, crisscross method. This two crisscrosses down, telling us that we should have two whole phosphates. So the whole thing. I have a multiple polyatomic, so I'm going to use parentheses. And then I have this three crisscrossing down, telling me that I have three bariums. So now I can write my compound of being Ba3, I have two whole phosphates, so that has to be in parentheses. So the polyatomic is PO4, but now I have two of them, and that gets boxed off. So this one would be Ba3, PO4, 2, and that's it. That's the answer for this. Guys, what do we think? We finished chapter three. Oh, it's such an amazing feeling to kind of finish the chapter, right? Thank you so much for tuning in. It was a pleasure. Hopefully you guys learned everything from chapter three inside and out. And if not, go back to, you know, the topics that you're a little bit worried on. I'll be there for you guys. Find those questions out. I do them for you guys. Thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind, click the subscribe button. That helps the channel out greatly. Thank you so much for the support so far. It's been an awesome journey. Let's go into chapter four and let's work hard. All right. I'll see you guys in chapter four. Bye-bye.